Welcome to the Mischief, I'm Valen and this is Vintage Story. Today I'm going to be teaching you everything that I can about bees and food storage. You might be asking yourself what benefits are bees going to have for you? Well, let me tell you, they're actually quite beneficial as far as light sources, food, all sorts of different ingredients, poultices for healing, and even weapons. So that being said, what kind of stuff can you expect from bees? Well, bees are going to be found out in the wild. Uh, in fact, they're a little bit challenging to find. And there are a few tips on how you can best locate them. One of which is actually to open up your settings menu. You're going to want to go over to your sound and make sure that your ambient sound level is cranked up as high as it can go. This is going to help you to hear bees. Now you can also see them if you're fortunate enough, but most likely you'll end up hearing them before you see them. If you look over here, in this area you'll notice that there's a whole bunch of these like little, uh, little particles, kind of like flying around in the air. This is what you might see if there's a beehive nearby. Now this doesn't guarantee that you're going to know exactly where the beehive is though. In this case, you're probably going to be wandering through a rather forested area and start hearing a buzzing sound. And then you're going to want to follow your ears. And eventually you'll find yourself something like this. It's a little bit difficult to see here. Let me actually get closer and look up at it from underneath. Right here we've got a wild beehive. It's a medium sized one. They come in two varieties, medium and large. But the population inside of them is going to actually be different from what the size is. This one being medium with a population that is poor. In order to increase the population of these bees, you can always add flowers. Alternately, you can just break this with your bare hands and you'll get yourself some of these combs. Plus, you have a chance of releasing some angry bees. In this case, I was fortunate enough and they just kind of disappeared. If you do release angry bees, you're probably going to want to run. They are quite nefarious, but they don't do very much damage, thankfully. Now what we have here is quite the buzz. This is just an example of ways that you might be able to see bees. If you actually chop down every tree that you find in the wild, you will destroy the habitat that bees live in and not be able to get them. You might be able to get some of the comb, but you will end up destroying the colony, just like I did moments ago. These are just demonstrations of each of the different wood types. You can find them in just about every tree there is. You can find them in a variety of different climates as well. But if it's extremely dry or extremely wet, then you're probably going to have some difficulty finding them in that area. You'll also only be able to find them in a tree, whether it be in the log like you're seeing here, or on one of the sides hanging from perhaps a branch or something like that. The one on the left is a medium sized hive. The one on the right is a large sized one. Any of these ones in the trees are just going to be your standard ones, and their population can be increased with flowers, which I'll demonstrate soon. But I just wanted you to know so that you could see what these look like. So if you are going to destroy trees and you hear bees nearby and you're not sure where they are, start from the top down of the tree and you'll have a much better time of being able to find it, potentially if you think it's in one of the trees, because then you'll come across this first. If you start at the bottom, you'll destroy the entire tree, and that takes out all of the branches and logs with it. Now here I have an example of a wild beehive that is large, and it says nearby flowers 95. There's a possibility that uh, it might actually say nearby flowers none, and the population size could be poor. These are things that you're going to want to change. In this case, you'll also notice that there's a lot of flowers nearby. That's because I have it set up where I made my own little platform to work with here. Uh, in this case, yes, I was getting attacked by wolves. That's been remedied since. But you might have to build your own little platform for this. You're, if you find a beehive up in the air, like in this case, I then took some dirt, built a platform, eventually over time some grass grew. But I also collected as many flowers as I can. By looking at the description of any of the different plant types, if it says flower on it, then it should count for any kind of bees. And they're going to need these within seven blocks of their home hive. In this case, it's this spot here that is directly where the crosshairs are. And it doesn't have to be on a horizontal plane. It can also be vertical. It's just a matter of the more you have nearby, the bigger the, uh, the colony will get quicker. And even better than that, you'll be able to capture them with an empty skep. 
Now an empty skep is made from either papyrus or cattails, plus a little bit of clay, whether it be fire or blue clay. Or you could even buy one from an agricultural trader, but it's so cheap to make that I recommend that you just try and make one yourself, or several in some cases. Once you make one of these, you have a possibility of being able to capture wild bees. In this case, I put them as close to this as I possibly can. You can put it a little bit further away, but the closer it is, the more likely you're going to have some kind of population get into this skep. You're going to want to make sure that it's no farther away than three blocks. By increasing the number of flowers in the local area, eventually you'll see at the top here it says nearby flowers 95. That number will go up, but it doesn't go up every few seconds or anything like that. It doesn't check very often. It might check every like five or ten minutes. So you might want to set up a whole bunch of flowers around it and then just walk away and come back later. Set up a little marker on your map so that you know where to come back to in the future. And you can also take some flowers and start setting up a new home for when they are ready. But if you notice, it also now says nearby flowers 100. Population size, large. Will swarm in less than a day. It might say a lot more than that, depending on the number of flowers you have in the local area. If you only have a few flowers nearby to the beehive, it might take several days or even weeks. and Or it just might never even do it if you don't have enough flowers nearby. Plus, it's not actually going to swarm unless your population size is large to begin with. And that's not the wild beehive large, that's just the population size I'm talking about. I'm at another spot over here that's a little bit more difficult to look at, but right where the crosshairs are is a wild beehive that is medium size, and its population size is poor. The reason being is because it has already populated several nearby skeps that I had placed. Yes, you can place them up against the wall or on blocks below them, it doesn't really matter. I had also covered the entire area with flowers in the nearby area so that it could just help populate it quicker. And yes, I was using Lily of the Valley, but you notice over here I've got cow parsley and stuff. And if I look at it, it says there's 116 nearby flowers. Now, you don't have to get that many. Just know that the more you have, the faster they're going to start populating and growing. Making empty skeps is one thing, but transporting filled skeps is something completely different from what you probably have experienced before. In the past, you've always had things in your hotbar or in your inventory, but in this case, you're going to actually have to remove one of your inventory storage slots, meaning one of your bag or basket slots here, in order to carry a populated skep. And you'll have to have an empty space already there in order to do so. So if you look here, I've got several of these skeps have since populated. The, the bees in here actually swarmed, and that's why the population size is now poor, because it was large and it swarmed to all the nearby skeps. So I have several, and I can just right-click, and it instantly goes into my inventory in the empty slot. So I can grab several of these, but when I try and grab the last one here, I don't have enough space in order to store that. So I'll have to come back in the future. But you don't have to worry about populating several to start with. I was just showing you this as an example. At the very least, you just need one populated skep, and you should be good to go. So once you have your skep, you're going to want to put it in a secure location, because if you don't, well, you're probably going to get a few different critters coming to get your honey. And that means that they'll destroy your bees, and you won't even have any. So you're going to want to put at least some kind of fence up around it, or alternatively, you can put it up on some kind of post. Just keep in mind that if it starts snowing in the wintertime, that that will also start piling up. So usually two high posts is pretty good, though not entirely always secure. So I will often put up a fence and put them up on a post, just in case, so I have two lines of defense. Just right-click while holding on to the uh, populated skep, and you will place it where you are aiming. I'm in creative, so it just created a duplicate, but you can see it says nearby flowers zero, population size poor, but there's lots of flowers. Remember, I said it'll take maybe five minutes, sometimes 30 seconds, other times maybe 10 minutes. It, it all depends, but it will start increasing the population relatively soon, and you'll start getting more bees. Now you notice I've got a few other posts nearby, as well as some dummies. Why do I have these? This is so that you can protect yourself and create more population. Now, if you take some empty skeps and you then put them on nearby posts, when this hive starts getting populated, 
to a high enough extent with enough flowers nearby, it will then do exactly what you just experienced by finding them in the wild. It will move on to nearby skeps and start creating a population. You're going to want to keep it within about three blocks. So you can have like a couple blocks space between them if you so desire, but this should work pretty good. So let's say that your skep now reports as harvestable. As you notice, it does say so on the little tooltip when you highlight over it. Be sure to turn that setting on if you do not have it, so it'll make your life a little easier. Otherwise, just look for the little entrance here and you'll see that it'll start looking a little bit brighter and more honey-colored when it's ready. So how do you harvest one? Well, you end up getting some special tools called your hands and you just start punching this thing. Once you've done so, you may end up getting some of these bees. Angry bees, so to speak. This is what the dummies were for. In the current version that I'm in, there's a little bit of a bug where it doesn't attack anything, but just know that if you have a dummy nearby, there is a chance that the bees will attack the dummy instead of you or other creatures. Bees are pretty much not really going to judge you for who you are and what you just did. They will attack you, they will attack a dummy, they will attack any nearby farm animals that you might have, so be sure to keep your bees away from your farm creatures so that they don't get injured by the stings of these little insects. But I do recommend that you have a dummy nearby just so that you can train it onto the dummy and then you won't be bothered by it anymore. But you'll notice that I did get a bunch of drops. I got some cattails, I got some honeycomb. Yes, I already had some in my inventory, but I got a little bit more. So the cattails are just left over from breaking the, the skep itself. You can use it to craft a new one and then put it down. Hopefully you are not breaking your only beehive. You always want to keep at least one nearby so that others can be spread into when they start uh, swarming. But once you have some honeycomb, you then have some options on what to do with it. If you have a bowl, a jug, or even a wooden bucket, you can then start harvesting your honeycomb into all sorts of goodies. So you'll need to aim at one of these three options, depending upon what's available to you, and just sneak right click with the honeycomb. You'll start having this little animation and you'll drop some honey into there. You'll notice this says one times bowl, 0.2 liters of honey. A bowl will actually hold one liters worth. So I can do this a few more times before it ends up getting full. There we go, I have one liter of honey. Now I can try and add more, but I don't have any more space in the bowl. Now you have a few options for this. You can actually take this bowl and you can dump it into a barrel. Alternately, you can use it in a cooking recipe or even better, you can just straight up eat it. And by eating it, you actually get a little bit of healing in the same time. So it's actually not too bad. It gives you three of your little uh, saturation pips here or 300 and gives you at least a half a hit point of healing. So it's a really nice way of getting a little bit of that. Now, of course, you can dump this stuff into jugs as well as wooden buckets as well, and you can use those to place them into barrels if you so desire. But you'll notice that I got some beeswax from just crushing some of this honeycomb and getting the honey into the bowl. This can be used for a multitude of different things. For starters, you can make a candle. Now, a candle by itself is a very small light source. Now, without a candle, it's very dark. Holding one, you then have a little bit of a light source uh, with you, but it's not very much at all. But on the plus side, you can place them on the ground. Just need to sneak, right click, and you'll place one. And yes, it will stay lit, though carried lights are a bit brighter than those that are actually placed in world. If I start adding more, I can then just click more on here until I get a very bright candle block, a bunch of candles. But you can also use these as a lantern. You'll need some kind of metal plate as well as some quartz for the sides, and you can make yourself your first lantern, but that will require access to some metalworking, which I'll be getting to in a future episode. Alternately, if you're fortunate enough, you could find a chandelier or maybe even buy one from a trader and start clicking on it the same as I did with this fence over here and just add some candles to it, and it can get you a light level of 24 being, I believe, the brightest light level in the game. So a chandelier is quite nice. Now, alternately, beeswax can be used for a few other things besides just candles. And that is going to be for cheese, which is going to be in the future. But just know that you would need some in order to wax the cheese so that it can age properly. Alternately, you can use it to seal a crock, which I showed you uh, in a 
previous episode and for making a longbow of all things. But that's kind of like an alternate re recipe. As you can see here, it rotates through fat, resin, and beeswax. So you do have some options for when you're making a longbow. Coming back over to this area, we can see that this one grew, became large, and then started spreading to some of the other skeps. Didn't go to all of the skeps. Looks like it went to three of the four that are available. And you'll notice that I have those straw dummies nearby just so that I can have those to be attacked instead of myself. Now to transition into a bit of food storage, of course beeswax is actually rather important for that, but you can also use a barrel filled with honey and just close it. Once it's been closed, it should eventually ferment into mead, which can be an entertaining, if not uh, saturating, beverage that you can drink. And last but not least, who can forget the bee nade? This is actually a grenade filled with angry bees. And yes, you can use it on your friends, you can use it on your livestock. Remember, they really don't care who they attack as long as they're nearby. You just need a few of these ingredients and you can just walk up to a hive that is populated like so. Right click and you will grab a whole bunch of bees and get your empty skep back. Then you now have a filled bee nade. You of course can put your skep back in place and hopefully your nearby colonies will repopularize that. But uh, then with your new filled bee nade, you can throw it like you would any kind of ranged weapon. Just throw it back. I was actually standing up against a fence, so that was a poor choice. But <laughs> it will cause a little bit of, of blunt damage to whatever it hits, and then it will fly off to attack the nearest creatures and start doing really tiny amounts of just stingy damage over time. But let's go downstairs into a cellar. This is an example of the biggest cellar that you can make, and it still count as a cellar. In this case, it's a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven cube space. And the more efficient you have it, the better off you're going to be for keeping your food long lasting. You'll notice that shelves, they are one way of storing items in your cellar. It doesn't mean that everything is going to be better on it, but sometimes you just want that little display. It works really good for storing crocs so that you don't need to worry about it and you get to see them uh, very easily in this case. And not everything on the shelf is going to stack. So if I have something in a crock already and I put it on the shelf, the crock itself is probably going to retain the best value dependent upon your seller. So putting storage in storage isn't going to work. It's putting storage in a seller that will end up giving you an extra multiplicative bonus for your storage. All right. So to explain and understand a little bit better, let's just go with the constraints of the cellar to start. The seven block cube space. First and foremost, you should probably try and have all of the blocks be of a similar or solid material at the very least. Yes, you can vary it, but the more you vary it, the less effective it may end up being. It's kind of a difficult process to figure out, but just know that that is one factor in it. Another one is you don't want it to have any light, so you're going to want to have things closed off. If you have something like this where it actually has access to the sky, it's probably not going to be quite as effective as if I could just close it. Yes, I could put a, uh, a block up above or something like that, but it will work all right. If you have a little like a, a, a jog coming into the side or a, a door going into the edges instead of coming from the top, that would work as well. And no cellars do not have to be underground. They can be above ground and you can enclose them. But usually the thicker the walls and the less light you have, the more insulating and the better they're going to be. Light sources. They do not actually affect anything in here provided it's just a standard light source. So you can have some lanterns in your uh, cellar area and not worry about any kind of issue. So let's give an example of something. I have a bunch of blueberries. These are fresh for two days. If I put them in this storage vessel, which if you notice, it then gives you the values of how good or bad things are going to be in here, it will then extend the lifespan considerably. In this case, it goes up to 7.6 days. This can be extended even more if you cook it, put it in a crock, and seal it up. I showed you this in the previous cooking video, and that should be somewhat straightforward, which you, of course, you can just take one of these crocks open up your inventory, combine it with a bit of beeswax or fat, and you can seal it. 
course, this one's empty, so that's not really going to serve any purpose. So I don't recommend wasting your materials like that. You'll want to have cooked something and put it in those first. That's a really good way of storing things. Alternately, you could take a cooked pot of food and bring it down here. Setting it on the ground is going to be about as effective as if you put it in the vessel. Remember, putting different things like crocs, pots of food and such into another storage container in a cellar isn't going to change anything because it's already in some kind of storage container. In this case, it would be an empty crock or the pot of food. Even though you can put it in here, if you wanted to just keep it up out of the way, it won't actually gain the multiplier bonus that you see at the top of the screen. Now, do you have to have this massive of a room for your cellar storage? No, no, not at all. In fact, you could just have it be one block. I've shown you that in a previous video as well, where you could just have a single block be in that space. And just for reference, keeping the door open or closed doesn't make any difference for your cellar it will actually still give the same barrier values. In this case, I have a single storage vessel down here and I have some blueberries. If I open this up, blueberries last for two days, put it in here, it says fresh for 4.9 days. Now this is going to change depending upon the size, the different blocks that you are using to insulate it with, the depth, how much insulation there is, if there's any gaps nearby, and so on. Also, the light levels, which if you're fermenting cheese, you should know that you are definitely going to need to have a bit of uh, no light going on with this. So just having a straight down option like this unless you're having it inside of a house and then you don't you've got something like a roof up above over top of it and so on then you should be a lot safer about it and it'll actually say that it's suitable for fermenting cheese if you look at a shelf in this case at the top it says suitable spot for food ripening now the different door types are something to think about it doesn't matter if it's a trap door doesn't matter if it's a sleek door doesn't matter if it's a solid oak door. What it does matter is if it's a crude door, you don't want one of these. This effectively is not counting as a proper door coverage, so it, it's going to be similar to if you didn't even have the crude door there to begin with. But any of these are going to work just fine. And with that, I think we're going to call it here. Tune in next episode for a little bit more interesting stuff with Vintage Story. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, come visit us on Twitch, and until next time, folks, I'll see ya.